the spirit we know as the Watcher or more commonly known as Mr. Boots. This actually draws in anything demonic, anything evil or malicious and traps it in this circle. This movement behind Amy, I can hear it. Hey Crypt Keepers, thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight, Jared and I are investigating one of the most haunted places in the United Kingdom. We are in Scotland's Edinburgh vaults. There are so many ghosts down here, so many stories, and a lot of them are rather dark. And I'll be honest, I admit it, some of them kind of scare me. So I think that we're in for a really cool investigation tonight. So make sure you're staying tuned, but also, I have a very special sponsorship that is perhaps the most fitting ever for an episode I've ever had on my channel, which I'm really, really excited about. So keep watching. Edinburgh, Scotland, claimed to be one of the most haunted cities in the United Kingdom. A beautiful place lined with busy streets, but lying just beneath this glorious facade is a series of dark chambers with a brutal history dating back hundreds of years, known as the vaults. Tonight, we will collect some of the best paranormal evidence within these vaults that I have ever featured on my channel. But first, I would like to introduce this video's sponsor, Established Titles. I couldn't think of a more fitting sponsorship because I truly fell in love with Scotland during my visit. I mean, look at how beautiful the streets of Edinburgh are to walk down at 5am after an intense paranormal investigation. And guess what? Now I own a piece of land there. Essentially, Established Titles is a project based on historic Scottish custom, where landowners can be referred to as a lord or a lady. So you can now buy as little as one square foot of land to receive this title, and it of course comes with a certificate to make it all official, which I keep perched on my desk to remind Jared of my superior stance. But what's more, for every order, Established Titles are committed to planting a tree through their work with One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, who work towards global reforestation efforts. I honestly couldn't think of a better keepsake from my time in Scotland and I do cherish my little proclamation certificate. And I know this would make the perfect gift for someone in your own life. And right now, established titles just so happen to be running a massive sale. Plus, if you use the code Amy's Crypt at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off your purchase. And the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within just a few minutes of walking distance. So you head to establishedtitles.com forward slash Amy's Crypt to make a lord or lady out of someone you know, or even yourself, just like me, Lady Amy. Thanks again to Established Titles for sponsoring this video, but now let's get back to the haunted vaults. The vaults themselves within the South Bridge of Edinburgh were originally built in 1785 in tandem with the bridge itself. It was originally to connect two higher ends of Edinburgh, the city centre and Edinburgh South Side. But in the process of the bridge being built, they decide they're going to build vaults within it because they decide they want businesses to operate atop the bridge. They'll get away from the low levels of Edinburgh's old town, where there was a whole bunch of low level sewage, poverty and crime, but also it gives them a sort of special area to operate on, if you will. However, in terms of storage, they decide they're going to use the bridge itself for that. 120 vaults get built across the entire bridge itself, and these are how we've come to know the vaults of the South Bridge. Although the vaults started their lives as a means to support business and connect the city above, it didn't take long for them to become inhospitable, suffering from floods and leading many businesses to vacate and leave them empty. Whilst the vaults themselves were originally used for storage, it doesn't take long for them to become used for very different purposes. Uh, the problem is, is that the rock that they use to build the bridge is rather porous, so merchants don't want to use it for storage, so you have the homeless of Edinburgh start to flock in, but you also have various different members of Edinburgh's underground. Amidst the homeless, you also have drug dens that start to set up, hellfire clubs, gambling organisations, criminals are starting to hide away to avoid capture from city guards of Edinburgh, underground pubs get established, as well as brothels and prostitution dens. For most people, the popular theory is that because the vaults were so miserable for people who lived their lives within them, as they would have had 13 months of life expectancy at most because of the terrible conditions with the wet, the porous rock, a lack of food, and amidst a whole bunch of crime and filth, that these people aren't moving on in death, that they're miserable or they're bitter, or they're sad or they're angry or remorseful and they can't move on elsewhere, haunting the vaults even now. 
With the vault's history taking a darker turn, it comes as no surprise that they may also be haunted as a result. Many to enter the vaults have claimed to have paranormal experiences there, and some have even been lucky enough to capture evidence of this activity onto camera. <laughs> The uh, vault itself, which is pitch black, is rumoured to be our most haunted vault, as a lot of people do have bizarre experiences there. The Witch's Temple, there's been a bunch of weird experiences within that as well. Uh, the original vault that the witches chose to act as her temple is known to have a very bizarre paranormal activity within it itself that has been trapped in the midst of a stone circle itself. And at the end of the street, there is a staircase where a group of mine have had a particularly bizarre experience itself. The common things that people experience when they come in the vaults themselves, oftentimes people will hear footsteps or they'll hear bizarre whispers, uh, they might feel something tug at their hair or tug at their coat. We have people who will see shadows from the corners of their eye they couldn't explain, oftentimes being in corporeal form. We uh, do have a few spirits such as the Chantering Child, uh, we have some spirits, uh, in particular banshees that appear here in the street of vault sometimes, uh, victims of the Great Conflagration of Edinburgh in 1824, but one spirit in particular that is quite prominent and some people actually come to the vaults themselves in hope of seeing is a spirit we know as the Watcher or more commonly known as Mr Boots. Tonight, we will take on the Edinburgh vaults ourselves to investigate whether they truly live up to their haunted reputation as being one of the most active paranormal locations in Scotland. So Crypt Keepers, for this episode, please refer to me by my proper title of Lady Amy. Crypt Keepers, we haven't even officially started to investigate yet. We literally just did a walkthrough and then interviewed Josh, which you guys probably just saw. But one thing that was really, really weird happened, and I actually observed it with my eyes happening in the moment, is I had set up two of these torches for just mood lighting behind me in this area here. I set them both to green, and I noticed one of them flash during the interview. Now, it went from green to white. And literally to change colour to do that, it needs to be physically pressed like this. Torches have never done that before. I feel like maybe something was playing with it. Was it physically pressed? I don't know. But that's what happened right here. Okay, Crypt Keepers, starting off our walkthrough, and yes, we did just have the interview and that weird thing happen with the torch or flashlight, as people in the US call it. Uh, so I think that that's kind of weird. It's a good, good start, kicking things off. But I wanted to come to one of the end vaults. So right now I'm standing in a vault, and you know, like back in the day, the homeless and destitute would have lived in here. This probably would have accommodated about 30 people, like people who were very stuck and down on their luck in society would have had to resort to living here and it would have been horrible, absolutely horrible. But also there was a lot of illegal activities that occurred here. And this is sort of why I wanted to start in this particular vault, because there's something super disturbing in the ceiling. So looking up, there is a hole here and you, it's very small. And that's something that they used to use to pass goods through uh, from a bottom vault to a top vault, vice versa. But I've been told they also sent children through those and sometimes the kids would get stuck and they would just leave them there and they would pass away. Some people believe that is why there are certain children haunting the vaults today. One of them I know is named Jack and he's quite a friendly little guy, attracted, more attracted to women and other children. People have been known to feel as though their hands are being held by him, which I, I find kind of sweet. Uh, they might feel something tug at their hair or tug at their coat, uh, rumoured to be the spirit of a young boy looking for a new paternal figure who died in the vaults when he was being first to work for drug dens as a smuggler. So I'm now rolling on a ghost tube. So my name is Amy and I'm here tonight with Jared and we call out to the spirits of the vaults. If there is anyone around, we would love to talk to you. Please don't be scared of us. You can come up to the lights in my hands to communicate. So guys, this spot right here is where I had a corner of your eye moment today where I was walking past this corridor getting some B-roll for Amy and I thought I saw a leg out here like this, like here, and then it sort of moved back against the wall as, it, as I went past. Um, and then I came in here and there was nobody there. 
And that's really weird because I'm pretty sure Josh was saying when we interviewed him that seeing things in the corner of your eyes, something that people report a lot of here. Sighting you know, shadow figures and full apparitions, yeah, it's common. You might have seen something like that. And when this occurred, we tried to debunk it with shadows and it definitely wasn't a shadow that Jared was casting himself, so. Oh my God. What? This gives me mad vibes of Game of Thrones where Cersei gets the wildfire onto the, the set of Baylor. Yes. And there's like a candle going and it's even got like the green glow. Well, you can't see it on yours, but it's like a green glow here. And there's actually candles down there as well. <laughs> So Jared was right here and was walking this way when he saw something in that room. And we have played around with uh, lighting. There are some light sources in here. We have emergency lighting, some candles still lit. So I, I, there's just no way that could have been your shadow. It's so weird. And in addition to this light here, there's also another one in the room. So yeah, it's unlikely that I would cast a shadow because there's another light in there illuminating the floor. Ooh, it's getting colder. Like just walking up here, so much colder. I would have thought the lower levels would be colder. Weird. No, well, that staircase was super cold. So just here in this area, actually that candle's gone out, Jared. Where the, um, the torch, you know the torch changed color? Oh yeah. So this grate still has a candle lit. That one with a torch changed is out now. Yeah. I mean, it could have just burnt out. But there are so many interesting things down here in the vaults, guys. And I'm so excited we're getting to explore them. One of them is behind this door here. And this is a real legit witch's temple, witch's altar, protective circle. I'm not sure of the right term. And inside, oh, it's just amazing in here. I love it. This here is a protective circle and I'm just gonna put ghost tube right in the middle because maybe that's the place with the most energy. There's not anything bad here. It's, you know, they say that these, this witch's coven, I guess, they weren't practicing anything dark or satanic or anything, with, you know, to that nature. And I know sometimes, you know, people will see these stars like that, but these were, um, I guess, white witches, good witches, they say. So they're doing things in here. This is a protective circle. So I've heard that there is quite a lot of activity to happen here as well. But this particular coven that was practicing here, there's also another area that's related to them that is far darker. Again, Game of Thrones, there's a dragon head up here. Makes sense. I'm just gonna show this as an example vault. I'm not aware of any stories with this particular vault, but I mean, all of them can be active. There was so much going on down here in the vaults back in its heyday, like it makes sense and ghosts can wander, right? I just heard a dragging noise. Yeah. Like out here. Sound like someone moving furniture almost. Spirits have been sighted down here. Probably the main one and the scariest one that people will talk of is someone known as the Watcher or sometimes Mr. Boots. Mr. Boots was an 18th century guard who came into the street of Alts one night itself looking for a criminal who was evading capture from the city guard of Edinburgh. Because the vaults were so gross and filthy and viewed as a poverty place, oftentimes the city guards weren't bothering to come because they viewed it as beneath them morally and that's why so many homeless came in the first place. But one city guard in particular comes here one night looking for a criminal who has been evading capture for months and he finds a criminal but just not in the way he hoped. He's been lingering around in death ever since uh, within the street of vaults and oftentimes you'll hear his footsteps as he stomps up and down the street of vaults as he just does what he did in life he just watches the street of vaults. Uh, sometimes people will hear the footsteps when they come into the street of vaults and they're visiting around. Sometimes people say they might see him and oftentimes he's attributed to wearing a big tricone hat, a big trench coat and big black boots hence the nickname Mr Boots. This room, I hate. 
Whoa. So they call this the dark room and it's literally pitch black in here. It is literally the darkest vault <laughs> and walking through here, you can just tell when you walk past. Cause what the, the heck? I heard a big bang, but I don't know where it came from because of the echo. I can hear water dripping, wasn't that, was it? I hear water running. No way, I heard a water drip. I heard a tap in here just now. That sounded like water. That was like a bang, like a. Just tell when you walk past. Just tell when you walk past. Can you tell us what that noise was that we just heard? You know what I hate? This, I was told, is a room where women get picked on and there's a bit of like a misogynistic spirit in here who pushes them, pulls their hair, it kind of bullies them, hurts them physically and I don't gel well with that so if there's some angry man in here like what's your problem what the heck was that in here or Can you make a love an, another loud bang for us? Did it. Can you make a loud bang very close to me? in my shoulders now like I'm freaking out <laughs> wow could that have been like street noise or something or surely not like that one just sounded like two bangs down there this actually is where our guide uh, had what he tells is his scariest experience. He didn't actually see it, but he was with someone that saw something very compelling to the ghost story of Mr. Boots just down here. I had a group in these vaults a few months back, uh, around about February it was, and it was a very quiet night for ourselves here at Old Riki. It was a married couple on their own who'd come for the nine o'clock tour. And as I bring them into the street of vaults itself, they're quite smitten by them. They just want to take some photographs, which of course is no problem whatsoever. But as they're starting to take photographs, the wife starts to freak out and she begins to panic and she's like, no, seriously, what's that? Why is she standing over there? Why is he standing over there? Out of the blue, and it was completely to the shock of myself and her husband. Uh, as neither of us saw anything. All my attempts to reassure her are not necessarily working. She starts to feel uncomfortable and she's starting to get more stressed out because she doesn't for a second believe myself. She thinks I've hired someone in to scare them, but I don't see anything myself and neither does the husband. It doesn't stop her in the slightest though. Nah, seriously, Josh, you have paid him to be here on this tour. He's gonna scare me, he's gonna freak me out. But I swear on my mother's life, I saw nothing. And the husband doesn't either. So he starts to freak out at this point and they start to have a shouting match in the street of vaults as he believes she's just putting on for the front but she screams out I'm serious Frank how do you not see him with that funny hat and then she begins to describe the watcher in frighteningly accurate detail for someone who hadn't even heard the story of the watcher at that point and hadn't heard any of the details about him she was telling me details I pass on in my tours details I don't pass on myself but also details you can't find online such as the wounds of his death Mr Boots if you're around tonight can you show yourself to us I would love to meet you. 31. Can you tell me what that number means? Your age? What the heck? This is like thick rock brick walls. And we're underground right now, so like, what is that noise? 
your age. So I don't know what these noises are. I can't say for sure they're paranormal, guys. I do know that there are two neighboring bars, one on this side, one on that side of the vaults, but we've purposely waited for them both to close to start our investigation. So it's actually after 3 a.m. now. So I know that there's nobody in those buildings. Guys, I wanna show you this vault. Not for anything like particularly spooky. Actually, maybe. Do you smell like alcohol? Yeah, I can. <laughs> just before you said that, I was actually just thinking it actually smells like wine or something in here. And it's weird because I didn't smell it earlier when we walked through here. No, no, neither did I. Father. Father. Okay, we'll come in a bit farther. But this is set up as like a mock. One of the illegal activities that happened down here was illegal, I guess, breweries and distilleries. And they also had, you know, things like prostitution um, and gambling dens down here. But this is a bit weird that we can smell that. What are we smelling? I can't even smell it anymore. I can smell a little bit. There are some like bottles of stuff down here, but these are just for display. Surely this wouldn't be actual liquor. Drink some. Ames, you're really mean to me. You gotta stop bullying me, right? <laughs> Get out. Get out. All right, Jared, are you ready for the darkest vault? Uh, see, this one for me is a bit freakier than the dark vault we were just in. Love. Love? No, I don't love it. <laughs> That's like a deceptive thing. Right? Love. Maybe it's like, no, come in. We bring you love. We bring you peace. Yeah, that sure sounds like something a bloody demon would say. <laughs> oh dear. This stone circle. Now, I am going to enter this circle. I don't know. They say it's a bit The dangerous. circle of evil demonic forces. Yeah, well, I gotta put ghost tube in the middle, so, you know. Oh, God. There we go. Nestled there nice and safe like. So, guys, a little bit of info, and I'm gonna stand in the circle while I tell you this. This was actually the original altar for the Wiccan or the Witches group that were here. They came here, set up in this room, and they never felt welcome or that it had a nice presence or energy. It always felt off right and they just believed that there was a darkness to this space like something i guess evil, like an evil energy let's say so they moved their altar to where we saw it a little earlier and they were fine down there they were able to have their protection circle which works as it was intended to this circle though became like the opposite of a protection circle this actually draws in anything dark anything demonic anything evil or malicious and traps it in this circle. So how does it feel being in there then? <laughs> you feel right in? I feel okay right now, but I do want to say that a lot of people have been physically attacked in here. The witch's temple with the stone circle inside it. If they step inside the circle, oftentimes we get emails in in the following days that they've started to discover scratches upon their bodies, uh, oftentimes in free, completely parallel, straight as a ruler. Uh, more often than not, that is how they look. So maybe I'm asking for it, it's just standing in here. When I came in here earlier, I felt very off. First time I stepped foot in here, before I even really knew what this room was, I felt gross. Like this room did not feel good. But now I'm standing in the circle, and I mean, we had that word love earlier. Maybe it's like, yes, trust me, come into the circle. <laughs> Nathan, is that what you said? I don't know if that's a relevant name maybe to the vaults who is nathan crypt keepers i really wanted to start the investigation sort of in the main tunnel of the vaults just because the vaults all lead off of this central tunnel people have sighted mr boots our main scary ghost down here i also had the flashlight go funny in the an area down here. So what I've done is I've set up a REM pod and a number of cat balls with ghost tube SLS monitoring that space. And I'll tell you what, we have had a ton 
of REM pod activity already down there. We've also had the cat balls go off. So I really feel like something is playing in that area. Jared and I are gonna kind of distance ourselves down here from that, just in case there's something that we make feel uncomfortable up there. But we did do a walk around sort of ghost tube session with my patrons and YouTube members. And we kind of ventured into the witch's circle and we got the word dress free and a weird noise in that area, which to me I thought was kind of interesting because there are literally dresses on display on the wall up there. So my name is Amy again, and I'm here with Jared tonight. We call out to the spirits of the vaults. Anyone who's here, please don't be afraid of us. We would love to talk to any of you. You can uh, go towards the lights up there, touch them, walk towards them, go close to them. That shows us that you're here. I invite you to touch us. I feel really lightheaded. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you want to stop or? No. Like almost a little bit sick and just like really dizzy. And I haven't felt that all night. There was one room that I felt off in, but that pass, this is like, woo. <laughs> um, let's do an EVP. All right guys, I'm rolling on an EVP session. Now if there's somebody around me and you're making me feel this way, can you come up close to this device in my hands, can you say something to us? Mr. Boots, do we have you here tonight? Can you tell us where you want us to go tonight? Is there anywhere in particular in the vault you want us to, to visit? Are you mean or are you nice? I just heard a bang. Yeah. Coming from this vault. Should There's nothing here, there's just a wall there. there, I reckon. Okay, let's move in. Just tagging that we're moving. Can you share your name with us? How long have you been here? I'm hearing movement or something. Stop now. Okay, I'm gonna cut this recording. It sounded like someone moving like boxes around or something. Yeah, and shuffling those... something. I don't know where it came from because it didn't come from in here. All right guys, I'm rolling on an EVP session. Now, if there's somebody around me and you're making me feel this way, can you come up close to this device in my hands? Can you say something to us? Mr. Boots, do we have you here tonight? Can you tell us where you want to go tonight, Zane? Yeah, there's a man's voice. I just heard a bang. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear it on the clip? From this ball. There's Should nothing here that's in there. there. Okay, let's move in. Just tagging that we're moving. You could hear that one there. You can hear it on there. That literally sounds like someone just walking. You can definitely hear the movement on our audio recording that we were hearing in the moment. You could, I could hear it clearer on the recording than with my own ears in the moment. And it sounds like footsteps. And that man's voice, I don't know what it says. I'll probably be able to analyze it better after. But there's a definite man's voice when I asked if Mr. Boots is here. 
Obviously, Mr. Boots, or the Watcher, as they call him, is a man. Maybe he was answering me. That was so weird. Oh, that's creepy. This proved to be one of the best EVP sessions we had ever conducted. Not only did we capture a male voice, yet we also heard footsteps and dragging noises, which was especially eerie considering footsteps are reportedly very common within the vaults. We now made our way into the witch's circle to continue our investigation, as we had earlier heard a noise within this room and received the response of Dress Through Ghost Tube when we filmed a bonus investigation session for my patrons and YouTube members. Just FYI guys, this is, they call the new witch room because the coven that used to do their work down here moved. What was that? That was on the top. Dress. Right on this. Dress. That corner where I heard the noise, there's dresses on the wall here. What the hell? This is where that noise came from, like that. Sounded like something wooden, maybe that seat or this. That was really weird. Work down here moved, what was that? Work down here moved, what was that? Right from the moment we began to roll our cameras, some of the cat balls we had set up in the protective circle triggered, signifying that someone may be around. Oh, got a cat ball going off. So guys, we've set up like cat balls around the uh, star in the witch's room with a REM pod in the middle. Interesting. Already the investigation's been interesting because we feel like we were cat ball again. Cool. Because we feel like we were getting noises and EVPs down that end of the vaults, I've actually set up Ghost Tube SLS down there and we've left that rolling. Hopefully it will pick up a figure. I'd be very interested if it does, or it could also pick up EVPs still. But I did want to come into the witch's altar and this is where we heard a noise that was definitely from within this room and we got the word dress. And as you can see, there are dresses on the wall here. So we wanted to come in and just run Ghost Tube Vox, see if we got any, you know, cat ball or REM pod activity in the protective circle. As I said, that two balls have now lit up. Thank you so much. If you can light them all up, we would appreciate that. Can you light up the other two? I'm just gonna swap these balls out, guys, because this one keeps going off. So just a little experiment to make sure that we don't have a faulty sensor. Did you just swap those balls? Cause the exact same one went off after you had swapped them, but obviously it was a different ball, just the same position. Yeah, I swapped them. Okay, that's weird. I'm gonna roll Ghost to Vox and see if we can get any vocals through. So if there is someone here that wants to talk to us, now's your chance. Can you tell us what you wanted to um, say about the dress earlier? <laughs> Which vault do you want us to go to tonight? Can you tell us where you want us to, to spend our time? Were you referring to these dresses on the wall? Can you tell us the name of anyone that's still down here with us tonight? What can this circle offer me protection from? Thank you again. Can you cast a spell? I thought I heard a kid say I'm 10. Is that your age? Can you tell me what colour you see? Focus. Focus. I heard white and light as well then. So we know that this was a special place. I hope that it's okay that we're here tonight. What was that? I thought I heard the name of Marie or something. Dead Marie? Dead Marie. 
This is quite an interesting response. Although I am not sure of any specific relevance, it is actually the second time during this session where something that seemed to either be trying to say Dead Marie or Dead Maria had come through. Unfortunately, we missed the first time this came through, so it really seemed like something the spirits wanted to convey to us. Does anyone watching know how this may be relevant to the vaults or surrounding areas of Edinburgh? Leave us a comment below. Who's Marie? Did Marie used to live here? <gasps> Thank you! Unfortunately? I didn't hear that, but they just... Oh, I can't believe like more than... Like all those balls just lit up then. I want to speak to the witches. Can you tell us what happened down here in the vaults? Are you Scottish? What a heavy noise up here. You're touching things on the altar. You're not going to and then leave you or something? We won't touch anything on the altar. I heard leave again. Are we not supposed to be in here? I'm sorry. We're not going to touch anything or harm anything. If you want me to leave, if you walk into the middle of that star, you go towards the red light, we'll know to leave. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Can you give us a sign? I thought it just said witch. Say witch. It said witch. It was like singing and then it was like, witch. Did you hear that? Yeah. It always sounded like a, a man <gasps> calling you a witch or me a witch. Nothing wrong with being a witch. Apparently not. Apparently not. No shame in being a witch. And I understand that the witches here were doing nothing bad or evil. Maybe it's a spirit from a different time that didn't understand the practice here. To protect. <gasps> to protect. To protect. This is literally the protection circle. Wow. Okay, yes, thank you. That's, that's why we're here. We don't want to get um, harmed tonight. What are we being protected from? Some of the responses coming through here were extremely relevant to where we were reaching out. Obviously, the response of which fits into this area, yet also receiving the words to protect fits in with the protective witches circle in the room and what we had been discussing at the time. What we didn't know was that around this same time, the ghost tube SLS camera left rolling down the hallway picked up two moments of interest. The first of these was a partial figure to be mapped, which was the first and only figure the camera had detected in the past half hour that it had been rolling. Initially, I thought this could have been a false positive given that the facial detection had mapped across the candle. Yet, about 45 seconds later, another figure was mapped in a totally different area. Both of these figures appeared for just a single frame. They were the only ones mapped during the entire session and seemed to correlate with these very intriguing responses we had received in just the next vault over. At this point in the night we decided it was time to tackle perhaps the darkest area of the Edinburgh vaults, the original witch's circle, which the group discarded after they felt negative and dark energy, but also where people to enter have claimed to be scratched. Oh man. <sighs> okay, obviously I'm sitting in the freaking creepy circle. 
Oh, I just oh, heard a noise out here too. Yeah. Maybe this is the bad, I honestly feel very anxious right now and walking up to come into here and I knew what I was going to do, Jared and I both heard footsteps trailing behind us that were not our own footsteps. I don't know what the f right? So I'm scared being in here. Right before I entered this room, I had a lot of heart palpitations. I do get anxiety, right? But I'm also doing something that's maybe a bit stupid right now. Whatever, I'm gonna do an Estes in this circle. So I've got noise cancelling headphones. I'll listen to a spirit box, relay what I can hear. Jared's gonna ask me questions. I will not be able to hear what he's saying. So if there's anyone that wants to communicate or freak us out, now is your time to do it. All right, is there anyone in this room that wants to communicate? Can you let us know of your presence? Black. Black, what does that mean? Can you tell me what that means? Can you make any of the other balls light up? Not just that one. Two. Yeah, can you make two of them light up? That'd be great. Is that water dripping? Can you tell me what made that noise? So I heard a woman screaming. Screaming, why is the woman screaming? Can you tell Over? me? Over where? Where do you want me to go? I feel like I heard a, a kid, like, maybe say her. What's, what's your name? Who are we talking to? Tonight. Yeah, what about tonight? What happened tonight? Have you enjoyed us being here? Can you make any of the other balls light up? Guys, just to keep things honest. I'm gonna switch up these balls because it might be a faulty ball. I like to do that when it's doing it non-stop. It's a party. Yeah, it seems like a party in here with all these lights going off. I feel like something's around me here. That could just be me. All right, guys, those cat balls have been switched up now, so we'll see if they still go off. Can you make any of the other Hello. balls? Hello, who are we speaking with? Can you tell me about some of the dark rituals that were performed here to keep the dark spirits in this circle? What does this circle mean to you? <sighs> the other one's lighting up now. That's great. Can you do, can you light up the others? Cuts. They're cat balls. <laughs> do you know what they are? Have you seen them before? It's really weird. Now that one's going off. That's not even one of the ones I swapped. I feel like my chin and my lip, I have a muscle spasm and they keep flexing. Are you touching her? Even more impressive, could you make one of the balls fall off the rock? Something rocks? about a chair. There's no chair in here. This movement, hmm. this movement behind Amy. Look. This movement behind Amy, I can hear it. What was making that noise? <gasps> Dark. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I'm not surprised. Look. Who's making that noise? What's making that noise? Leave. Why should we leave? I'm right. Hearing noises down there too now. What's making those noises? Can you tell me? Worse. 
Is she safe in this Killed. room? Killed. Is she safe in this room? No. <gasps> Who's touching that ball over there? <gasps> Shit, there's something in here. There's something in here. There's something in here. I'm here. I can hear you. Is that you making the noise? Who's, who is it? Yes. Shit, shall, uh, shall I grab? I don't know. In it. <gasps> what is she in? Why is Amy? She seems like son. She... I'm not your son. Seven. What does seven mean? Why won't that bull stop lighting up? Why is Amy doing that? Boss. Who's the boss? What are they the boss of? Tech. What is that supposed to mean? Am I, I'm not, how am I supposed to know? Guys, I was hearing definite noises in the back of the room behind Amy and I was actually pointing the direction of Mike in that direction when it happened. So I should have captured that. Not going to die. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> I feel like someone's putting a big black blanket on me. Like, that's weird, but it's, it's creeping me out. And I'm really sweaty. This is actually really intense. Maybe I should pull her out. Fuck. Her. I'm hearing taps down here. What is it? Should I go down there and, and explore what that is? Dirty. I'm hearing like three. <laughs> I heard three taps down here, guys. I'm just going to leave Amy for a sec. There is water. Jared? Dripping. Yeah. Oh, did you just leave me in here? I just went to, I just heard some taps down there. That was really, really weird. Why? Uh, I just like, I feel a little bit like... There was noises behind you. Like clear noises and I was pointing the camera at it when it happened. I just, I really feel like there's something just cloaking me in here. Like I feel very uncomfortable not being able to see. There are a few times where I thought about waking you up out of that. Why? Because it was weird. The oh, things you were saying. that makes me want to cry. And the noises that were happening in the room. I haven't felt anything like touch me or like try to cut me or scratch me or anything, but I just feel like there's, I'm not alone in this circle is what it feels like. And it, I feel like when it started, it felt like it was here. And then it just felt like it was like, I was getting covered by like a, a cloak of black. And I know like I've got my eyes closed, you know, you can see in your mind, but it was just felt like someone was coming over with a big blanket or something like that. Well, I know that cat ball is going off now, but when you said you were feeling something over here, these two balls are going off. And I swapped them to, to see if, you know, one was faulty and then they haven't gone off since. It's just been that one now. I'm getting chills <laughs> up and down my spine just hearing that. All right, maybe I should get it out. That is some creepy <laughs> After the Estes, I honestly feel a little bit uneasy. Like I feel a little bit nauseous and I know I did feel nauseous earlier tonight, but honestly, it just like, it felt really weird. So I'm gonna take a break from that room <laughs> and I'm gonna do another experiment where I just literally take photos. I'm gonna do some flash photography down here. Mr. Boots or the Watcher has been picked up in so many photographs in the past. I would love to capture one. Maybe flash is the way to do it, maybe it is not. But I'm gonna walk around and just take photos in the vaults and you guys can join me. Definitely get a photo in the creepy Game of Thrones, Sept of Baylor passageway. <laughs> yes. 
So if there is anyone around, I would love to see you. Please don't be scared of me. Can you show yourself? Now, I also want to take a second to thank you all for commenting on my videos as always. Cheers, guys. I'd recently filmed at the Oxford Castle in prison and I was doing an experiment with flash photography down there and a couple of people mentioned um, just some info and tips about photography to me that really, really helped me out. And essentially, it was um, my flash sort of stopped working and it was making this really weird noise in between photos. And the reason being was the flash sort of has to warm up in between in between shots and I was like wow I did not know that you guys teach me so much Mwah. did you just hear a voice I heard like a male yelling yeah me too someone down here I just heard you This is, of course, where Mr. Boots has been seen. We will go in the dark room. Hang on. Wow, that really is the darkest room. I just heard another thud then too. I did. What the heck? Bro. Bro. Bootsy, baby, are you up here? Bootsy, baby. <laughs> the nickname for Mr. Boots. I feel like he would like that nickname. Imagine I catch his apparition, he's just like this. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. All right, let's do the dark room. Can you even see? I do not want to walk into here. Oh my God, terrifying. This is so dark, literally. Oh my God, that's horrific. Well, that was a drip, but I definitely heard like dragging noise. Are you sure that was a drip? That sounded so weird. No, that was a drip. <gasps> what the heck? Quick, what? take a photo, take a photo, take a photo. scary when it does flash. Are you seeing anything? No. I mean, I don't have my glasses on. They're all out of focus. Every single one is blurry. We have a look. All of the ones in here are blurry. Let's take a selfie, Jared, and see if we get the ghost in a selfie. If we take one behind the curtain. Oh, why don't want to open it? Oh, I don't want to open it. I don't want you to either. I'm a bit scared. Oh my god. That is some Quick, creepy take a photo. ass. Ooh, what? A bug just flew into my face and nearly my eyeball. What the heck? Ew. Okay, what? I've seen enough. <laughs> Sadly, I did not get to leave Scotland with a photo of the notorious Mr. Boots ghost from the Edinburgh vaults, but I am pretty happy leaving with my new title of Lady Amy and one square foot of Scottish land. So a big thank you to established titles who are sponsoring this video. And remember, you too could become a lord or lady using the links in my description and the code AMYSCRIPT for 10% off your own purchase. Crypt Keepers, this has been one of my favourite investigations in the UK, this place is really, really cool.
it's legitimately spooked me out as well. And I gotta say, sometimes some of the best evidence I feel that I capture isn't necessarily, you know, responses through devices or anything like that. It's the feelings that I get. And this place really made me feel. And it has this heavy vibe to it, especially that room with the circle that I sat in to do the Estes. And I do my best to convey this to you. And I just, I really wish that I could share that experience of just what I was feeling felt very dark, oppressive, and just really gross in that, that room. And it's not something I can just show you on screen. So I do my best to kind of share with you what I'm thinking and feeling during investigations. And I hope that you guys will appreciate that. But I do just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That really helps us out. If you want to do any more reading on haunted Edinburgh vaults, then head to my website, amyscrypt.com, and you can follow us on social media at Amy's Crypt, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and we post bonus content on my Patreon and YouTube members, and they're linked below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.